Hi guys, so this is a kind of mishmashy video. I'll be discussing some stuff, responding to some things, and I'm going to read to you too. There's also going to be a tiny book haul. Righto. Um, also, a lot of people were saying really lovely things about the quality of yesterday's videos, and they were asking, did I get a new camera or something? No, I'm just actually filming in the day, in the morning, and it's been quite a while since I've done that. So you're probably getting really used to the like, lighting in my room at night time and it doesn't look too great. Um, also, I have to shrink down the, the size of my videos and um, lessen the quality in order for them to upload onto YouTube, so you're never going to see high definition sparkly shiny videos from me. So I apologise, that's just the way my, com my stupid computer, my really bad internet connection, I'm just left in that position. Okay, so I'm going to do a really quick book haul for you. Um, last week I was sent Supernaturally by Kirsten White, which is super exciting because I really enjoy Paranormalcy and it's up there somewhere. And I have started this but I'm not very far into it, but it's, it's a really fun series, I like it. And then yesterday I was sent Mammon by J.B. Thomas and I saw this in Braden's In My Mailbox haul last week and it features demons and it's got a cool cover, so hooray! And um, this is part of some of the requests I made for Simon and Schuster, but I got um, Sarah Alderson's Haunting Lila, and this girl can make things move without touching them, and she's taking a secret to the grave. I just think the cover's cool, because the blue and red. And then this is very exciting. Yesterday I was sent the advanced proof copy of Blood Magic by Tessa Grutton, and I'm, this is one of the books that, that is getting a lot of hype, but I'm genuinely excited to read, and I, ha I did start it last night because I couldn't help myself. It's sad that I don't have like a proper proper cover, but still very nice, and I've enjoyed the few pages I've read thus far, so yay! Um, I'm also at the moment trying to read The Shattering by Karen Healy. She wrote The Guardian of the Dead, and I really enjoyed that book, and this one is also set in New Zealand, and spooky things are happening, and it's good thus far. I also received an email from um, Marianne de Pierce, who wrote Burn Bright, and she asked me if I wanted a advanced um, reader's manuscript of Angel Arias, which is the second in that series. And I said, yes, please! So she's sending that to me in the next week or so, which is very, very exciting. And if you haven't read Burn Bright, please do try and purchase it. I know it's still not available in the US or Canada or the UK, but we're trying to get there. There's a petition to sign and things. I'll try and link everything in the doobly-doo in my pants. Okay. Now, on to, like, some Renee responds sort of thing. This isn't ranting, but, um, two questions that came up in the comments, um, the other day. I had from David, my friend at DP Book Reviews, hello. He, one, half of his question was, what would I like to see more of in YA? And then Coconut Palm 27 asked me, what subjects do you wish books would deal with but are very difficult to find? And I thought I'd combine my answer to those two questions. One thing that I wish I could find more, not just in YA, but in, in literature in general, and film and, and theatre, is the theme of chronic illness, um, or chronic disease. Especially in young people because there's the assumption that when you're young obviously you're, you're seemingly healthy and happy and all such things, especially because um, chronic illnesses for the most part are invisible. So they can't be seen readily, the evidence isn't there physically, and people doubt your word all the time, especially if you're young and you suffer from these things. And I've been suffering with this kind of shit for quite a while now. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's very hard to find uh, any um, form of, of art that really seems to deal with it. I mean, I, I haven't looked as broadly as I could, but it thus far has been difficult to locate. And it's just one of those things, you know how you argue that in YA there should be all matter of dark and disturbing and, and unhappy, unpleasant content dealt with because it's true to life and this is the experience of people and they should have something they can connect to and, and empathise with within the material they read and encounter and all that kind of thing. And it's an important thing to deal with. And I just wish that, you know, for that reason, that this kind of subject matter could be uh, um, approached. And so, um, some of you might know that next month there's a theatre festival that I'm helping to run and produce and I'm participating in, and Tamagotchi the Musical is premiering there. And there's also a few plays that I've written that are also premiering, and one of them is an original work called Something Chronic. As you can probably tell, it's about chronic illness, and it's essentially an autobiography. I'm not acting in it or directing or anything, I just, I wrote the piece. And I thought, maybe I could read you a little bit of my writing, 
and it's very much purple prose, I apologise. As you can tell, I ramble, so I'm very verbose. But um, I just thought I'd read bits of monologue stuff from the start and the end. It won't take very long. And if you don't want to listen, that's perfectly fine. But I thought I would try and answer these two questions in a somewhat creative way. So, yeah, um, I'll just read you a little bit. And um, hope I don't make you vomit or anything from the sheer awfulness of the writing. <coughs> Here we go. I haven't known a day without pain since I was 13 years old. And I know it will be this way possibly for the rest of my life. Pain doesn't care about time and place. It isn't picky as to dates and occasions. It couldn't care less if it's the weekend or 2am on a school night. If you're out shopping or at work or sitting an exam. If it's Christmas morning or your birthday party. Pain doesn't delegate. And you can't always prepare for its arrival. Pain is terrifying because it doesn't stop. It doesn't wait and it doesn't care. People tell you to cope, to get over it, to deal with your lot in life. They want you to make the best out of things and focus on the positives. Make all those lemons into some lemonade and shut the fuck up with all your whinging. That's what they desire. But I just long for a magic pill, a month-long sleep, or a shotgun. I won't stand here and ask you to pity me. I don't want you to nod and cluck your tongues in sympathy. A moment of your time, and if I'm lucky, a little of your understanding is all I can ask for. I'm definitely not a hero or a survivor. I'm not even brave. I'm a human being, and this is my life. The thing I hate most, what I truly feel ter terrible about is that I don't know myself beyond the pain. If I woke up tomorrow and by some miracle it was all gone, then who would I be? I mean, I'd be happy, of course, but then the moment would come when I'd have to look at myself and ask, who are you? Somehow, without meaning to, I've done the worst thing I can do. I've let these diseases, these names, these pains define me. It's how I know myself now. I am this person. I have these illnesses. I've gone and denied myself the most basic right to be known for who I am beyond all this shit. In the end, that's what makes me feel truly sick.